Hey everyone, my name is Michelle Ducharme and I am giving a video tutorial on using Padlet.com in your classroom. There are a couple of versions of Padlet you can have for school, for business. We're going to focus in on using the free version uh, today in your classroom. So the first thing that you would want to do to use this Web 2.0 tool is to sign up and to create a Padlet. So once you are on the sign up page, you'd use an email and a password to get yourself an account. Since I already have them, I'm just going to use my login information and log in. So, uh, first to begin, Padlet.com is a virtual wall or virtual bulletin board where teachers and students can kind of collaborate to share ideas, to share videos, to upload links or pictures um, to a collaborative site. Uh, to kind of share information and to kind of allow students to dig a little deeper into the topics they're studying. So when you first log in, you come to your dashboard. Um, I already have a couple of Padlets here going that I've done with my fourth graders so far this year. Um, when you're new to Padlet, uh, you're going to want to come up here to the right hand side and create a new Padlet, a new wall. Um, starts off with a very simple white page. If you want to get right into it right away, all you do is double click on your keypad and your mouse. And for my students and I, we use our names as the title. And then you can put in a little post to that uh, and then your post is created. You can edit, delete fairly simply. Uh, the right hand side of the Padlet has is your dashboard, um, creating a new Padlet, visiting your profile, sharing the link to your Padlet out, getting more information about Padlet itself, getting help, and then the bottom button here would be the most important one as you develop this Padlet to use with your students. So let's click there. Um, when you click to modify your Padlet, the first uh, part that pops up is your basic info. Uh, I've been using Padlet with my guided reading groups, um, with my classified students as a way of giving information about the class read-alouds that we've been sharing together, uh, giving more background information, providing videos and some pictures that kind of build in some of the background knowledge that they need in order to have a better understanding of the text as well as uh, in their guided reading groups to collaborate and to research and share and kind of stop and jot the way they would with post-its just in a virtual way. So typically I would title the Padlet with the name of the book that we're reading uh, just so that everybody can access it easily. Uh, for this one we'll say we'll call this Padlet in the classroom. And then a description could just be uh, um, and then you can choose a picture on the side to kind of go with your title and description. And then as you move down uh, the next choice of things that you would be able to modify would be the background wallpaper. Some are definitely more colorful and a little bit um, distracting than others. Uh, so you can scroll through this list and kind of see if there's anything that fits with your theme or something that maybe your students would really connect to. Uh, additionally, you can add your own Padlet. Uh, you can use the cover of a text to kind of get them um, connected into what you're doing. You can put in a picture of something that they've been working on. Anything that you can upload to your computer could become a wallpaper for your Padlet. So we'll just go something simple here. Nice. Uh, this one's the leather background. Not too complicated background. Anything that would be distracting to the students. So I think that one will work for, for this. Uh, next important modification that you're able to make is with the layout. A couple of choices here, three choices. Freeform is the default. 
um, that allows that whenever a student logs into this Padlet that they can click anywhere on the screen, start typing their Padlet, and wherever they've clicked is where the note will be stuck. So it can be a little bit complicated if you have stu multiple students logging in at once. Um, they may start posting on top of one another. So to avoid that, I typically use Stream, and that allows you to, it'll put the most recent post on top, and that way you can kind of see, and, and it's easy to read through comments from other students. There's also the option of grid, uh, placing them more side by side, uh, and just another way to organize it. I think for this one we'll go with Stream. Uh, privacy. Here's another important piece, of course, when you're working with students and they're sharing out ideas, especially with pictures. The default here is a hidden link, and they would have to have the link to the Padlet in order to be able to um, find it. You have, they can look only, they can write, or they can make changes. Um, I like this password protected one, so students would like them to be able to write. And then for this one, we'll just do, keep it simple, call it password. That way, students need, or anyone visiting the link would need the link as well as a password in order to view and to edit. Um, there's also an option down here that people may want to use to moderate the posts. That way, you have to, the moderators have to give approval before anything gets posted on the wall. I think it depends on the the content, the topic, if you would want that, if you are if you have a computer in front of you while students are working on this, that'd be an easy way to do it. If you want more kind of rapid fire posting, um, then you may want to have that turned off for that assignment. Um, notifications, if you'd like to get an email um, when posts are being um, updated, you can choose to do that. Address. Um, the default Padlet will create uh, using your username and then a collection of letters and numbers. Uh, I found for working with students it's a lot easier to create a, an address and ch choose a word that kind of connects with um, what the topic of the Padlet is. So in this case we'll go classroom, pick it, and it changes the address to padlet.com slash Dasharmi slash classroom. So common words without capital letters that students will have an easier time copying uh, into their uh, web addresses and then being able to save as a favorite as a bookmark so they can uh, access it more frequently or from home. So let me go back to my home page and show you some examples of Padlets I've done with my students this year. All right, so one of the guided reading groups that my students read um, was a text, Lily and Miss Liberty, and their book club name were the Bloodthirsty Readers. And I, at one point, had them do some question answering using Padlet. So my... I put, as the teacher, I posted questions for a couple of the chapters that they were reading. Students entered into the Padlet and started sharing some of their ideas uh, to answer some of the questions, which helped us spark a discussion after everyone was finished reading. So if you can click on a, or you can click on a Padlet, you can see that this student, Grace, uh, commented why the character was crying. Uh, you're able to go between the posts using these arrows at the top and then you're able to exit out here when you're finished looking at, at those posts. Um, additionally I put in some facts that help would that would help build some background knowledge for these students about the time period. I put in some primary or some primary source pictures as well as two videos related to the history 
of the Statue of Liberty, which is major content in the book that they're reading. So let me show you now how you can add in some of these extra features. Uh, it's very easy, and kids would also be able to uh, put in information that they're finding. So it's great for research projects and research clubs as well. So to make a new post, you just double click. And let's call this uh, history of the statue of liberty. Uh, I could put in some text. I'm going to use YouTube again. Um, down here are the different types of attachments that you're able to add in. You can do voice recording, you can insert videos, you can insert uh, web pages, pictures, and files. So in this case we're going to upload a new website or a new video from YouTube. So I already have that YouTube site here ready to go, the video that I want. I'm going to come over and copy the web address. Come back here, we're going to link from the web and paste in the address to the video. Submit that. It gives you the option, making sure that that's the video that you want. It is, we'll say OK. And then here you go, you have that resource for students to access right on their Padlet page. Um, and then they would also be able to add in any resources that they're finding in addition to the ones that you've posted. So coming back to my home page, I've got a couple of different uh, uh, Padlets I've created with students, uh, additionally with some of my colleagues. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can utilize Padlets, certainly not just guided reading groups, but creating documents, creating short assessments, or getting feedback from students in a virtual way. They'll get really excited about it. I can tell you my fourth graders loved Padlet. They loved that everything could be connected back to what they were doing using their book club name, using a web address that matched their book titles. Uh, it's a very cool web 2.0 tool that's easy to use, that gets students excited, and has lots of different options for your classrooms. So I hope that you try out Padlet, make yourself an account, and try it with your students. Thanks for watching.